welcome back to my YouTube channel and the fourth episode of the prep series. So today's episode we are going to talk about costs, so how much it costs to compete, um, where you can potentially save money and then where you shouldn't try to save money. So grab a cuppa, grab a pen and pad and let's get started. So there are around about five things that are non-negotiables that you need to bear in mind when thinking about competing. This video is going to be all just related to bikini, um, although it will be quite similar for other female competitors. We all kind of are in the same boat. So non-negotiables that you absolutely need to compete. Number one is your entry fee. Now, every single federation will require you to pay to compete with them. Now, across the board, it's it varies. Some federations are similar in cost and then some are different. So you should expect to spend anywhere between 30 to 215 pounds per category. So some federations will allow you to compete in multiple categories if they offer it. So like with bikini, for instance, you could compete in the first timers category, in the junior if you're under 23, and then also in the open category if that's something you wanted to do. Not all federations let you do this. PCA don't. Um, that's why they have their own first timers show. So if you are a first timer, you only have one category. Um, but yeah, so PCA, FitX, NFM, they're all between kind of 30 to 45 pounds a category. And then it jumps up when you go to two bros. So two bros is at least 105 for a category. And on their Arnold sports event that they're doing this year, it's actually 215 for one category. Made me feel sick a little bit when I booked that one. <laughs> <laughs> but two bros is always more expensive and that's because it is the only one that gives you that IFBB pro route um, so if you're not quite sure what that means IFBB is the only athletes that can then get to the Olympia and the Olympia is like the top of all bodybuilding um, competitions so that's why two bros is always more um, second thing that you want to think about is membership so some federations will require you to have a yearly membership with them and this generally costs anywhere between kind of 35 to 50 pounds for the whole year so you'll pay that once and then you can compete with them as many times as you like that year so pca and um two bros are 35 pounds for the year so that's another thing just to bear in mind um third really important thing that you need is your bikini this is probably going to be the biggest cost in your whole competitive season. Um, we'll talk later down the line kind of where you can poten potentially save money with bikinis, but you're looking at at least kind of £250 and it can go all the way up to £500, £600, depending on style, level, that kind of thing. And then your next thing that you need is some posing heels have mine here so your Cinderella bikini heels <laughs> now these particular ones that I've got are cocktail 508 SD something I will write it in so you know and um, these were 65 pound and I got them off compact and um, not all of them are 65 there are some cheaper just some plain clear ones they are, I think the cheapest ones are 45. There's loads of heels on there, but you don't have to get ones with gems on. Obviously, I'm just a magpie and I wanted sparkly ones. And right now, I keep thinking about the other cocktail heels that they do. And they're literally the same as this without a strap, but they're just full diamante. And I really want them, but they're £100. And I don't need any more shoes because I've only worn these for three shows. But I want some, so I can't guarantee I'm not going to buy them. I keep looking at them and then I don't get them. They're just so pretty. They're like chandeliers on your feet. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about the obsession. Um, so shoes are really important, something that you really need. Um, and then your last thing that is super important is your tan. 
Um, so a tan is going to cost you, on average, about £70 per show. Um, that includes your, your base coat and then your top coat and your glaze before you go on stage. Um, so next few things that we're going to talk about are important, but they're not essential. Um, so number one is your posing. So there's a few things you can do, um, but we're just going to talk about posing sessions one-to-one -to, -one to begin with. And they are generally £65 for 30-minute sessions. There are some where you can get a block and pay less. Um, there might be some posing coaches that also offer cheaper than that. But as a general rule, if you're looking for like Emma Heineman or an IFBB pro or a PCA pro posing coach to coach you, it's going to be around about £65. So that's another thing just to bear in mind. Depends obviously how much help you need with posing, how many sessions you want to have and yeah that kind of thing really. So it's really kind of, it depends on you how much you want to spend, how much you can afford to spend. And then your next thing you want to think about is spectator tickets. Now, you want someone there to watch you when you're on stage. This might not be a cost that you need to think about, but it's just something to bear in mind. Um, I mean, you can always get your spectators to pay for themselves. But generally, they're 25 to 45 pounds a ticket for a spectator to come and watch you. Um, and then your next important thing is your stage photos. Now, you haven't dieted for 14, 16, 20, 25 weeks to not get your professional photos. So make sure you budget for them. They're usually 35 to 65 pound. Again, it depends which federation you're competing with. But yeah, PCA it's 35 and with um, two bros it's 65. I shouldn't imagine that it's gonna be any more than £65 um, for your photos, but they are always really good quality. And obviously you want to get the photos of you on stage and you don't just want to be left with like iPhone photos. That's not the way to go. Um, so that's those. Or next thing you want to think about is your hair and makeup, nails, that kind of thing. So to get your makeup done, it's going to cost you 65 pounds thereabouts, 65, 70. Um, if you're gonna go with a makeup artist that generally does competitions. And then if you wanted to get your hair done on top of that, it's gonna be probably 25 pounds more on top of the makeup cost. So that's hair and makeup. And then obviously if you're gonna get things like your nails done, 30 to 40 pounds for acrylics, if that's something you wanna do. Again, we'll talk later on how you can save. Um, so yeah, and then things like hair removal, um, getting your hair coloured, obviously it's different, depends on what colour hair you've got, what you have done, um, what your hair removal is already, like if you get waxed usually, then get waxed for a competition, if you shave, it's not going to cost you much money, but that's just another thing that you've got to think about. Um, and then your if your show is not close to you, it's not in your hometown or like a short driving distance, then you're going to have to book a hotel. Um, generally, you get your base coat tan done the night before show, so you're going to want to stay close to the venue the night before and then you'll get your top coat the next day. So you just wanna think about how much a hotel is gonna cost you um driving there and back parking etc i always look at booking.com because they always have good deals and you can always book free cancellation so if you find anything better you can cancel it or cheaper you know um airbnb is another good one and also a good old travel lodge ibis premier inn that kind of thing and if you book them advance in advance you're always going to save money so that's something that you've just got to think about so, now I've spoke about the things that you need to pay for, slash want, um, we'll talk about how you can save money. So, 
First thing that you could potentially save money on is your bikini. Now there's a few things you can do. First thing is you could buy a second hand bikini. Compact hat, uh, I can never speak. <laughs> so Compact have a marketplace that you can buy second hand bikinis from. So girls that have competed before, they're selling them. You can get a bargain. The only downside to this would be it's not made to measure to you. Um, so if you're a first time and you don't really know how small you're going to be, what your sizing is going to be like, it could potentially not fit you and then that's not going to look good on stage if you're in a bikini that doesn't fit you. So that's the first thing you could do. Um, second thing is you could buy a lower level bikini. So they generally have like four or five levels where you buy, which literally just depends on how many gems you want on it. So you could get a plain bikini and if you're super creative and you have a steady hand, you could gem it yourself. Um, this is something I could never do <laughs> because I'm awful at anything creative, but it's something that if you're good at that kind of stuff, go for it. Like, and if you've got the time, to learn how to do it and to actually put the gems on, etc., then yeah, why not? You could save yourself 200 quid. Maybe more, depends. I think a baseline bikini is like at least 200 pound. So if you think like the average cost of a bikini is like 400, you could save a bit. Um, and then the last thing that you could potentially do to save money on a bikini is to look out for when there are sales, discounts, that kind of thing. So me personally, I bought my bikini in the Black Friday sale. So if you know that you're competing like the beginning of 2022, in November, there's like 95% chance going to be a Black Friday sale. So I got something like 15% off, I think, or 20% off. I saved 100 quid on my bikini anyway, and I paid my deposit and then I'll pay the rest of it just before I get my bikini. So your deposit is like half the cost. So it's a good way to save some money. So that's with your bikini. Next thing to save money with is with those shoes. Um, you can again buy second hand shoes. Um, if you really want the sparkly shoes, you could buy the plain ones and then gem them yourselves if that's something you wanted to do. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having a plain shoe. Lots of people wear no like shoes without any gems on. It doesn't mean that they don't look put together. Like It just doesn't distract from your physique, which is Good, I just love the sparkle. Um, so that's something you could do. Compaq, again, they have secondhand shoes on there, so you can potentially save some money. You could also look on sites like Depop, eBay. Just make sure you get like proper competition shoes and not like the clear ones you'd get from Pretty Little Thing. What are they call like per Perplex? Pers per oh, you know what I mean anyway. Um, but yeah, they've got to be like the proper ones. And just check like with the Federation that your shoe is allowed because sometimes they can be funny with like platform length and heel length that kind of thing um but i always go to combat because you just can never go wrong they know the ins and outs of shoes so would recommend um and then again like i said with the bikini watch out for when there's sales usually midsummer there is some kind of discount and then black friday in november so you can save some money by looking at their socials and just seeing when they have a sale. Um, next thing that you could save money on is compete in a show that is close to your hometown. So pick the shows that aren't too far away so you don't have to spend the money on traveling there, staying in a hotel, that kind of thing. So most of the time shows are in big cities. So if you live close to a city that is doing a show there, compete in that one and that's how you can save quite a bit of money. Um, um, another way you can save some money is on posing. So you don't have to spend £65 each session, get a session every single week. Um, there are loads of resources online. So the Posing Pro, Emma Hyman, her website in the members area, which is free to join, they have loads of like free videos that show you like posing sessions in bikini and other categories that's one thing that you could get for free she also does paid tutorials so they're like 25 pounds for a half an hour like lesson um, and there's two levels for bikini so you could get both of those 
um, and that's still cheaper than one lesson. And then the federations also do um, quite often like posing camps and posing workshops. So NFM, I know they did a virtual one last week, so it's always good to kind of look at Instagram, see what they're doing. Two Bros did one last year where you go to like a gym and it's free for you if you're competing with them. And sometimes even if you're not competing with them, you can still go and PCA do them as well. They've got one coming up in May. Um, so they're always really good, good to go to, even if you've, you're not trying to save money or whatever, um, because then you really know what that federation wants to see from your posing. So that's always good to keep in mind. Like I'm going to one next month um, for PCA. So it'll be, it's an extra, isn't it? You can never practice your posing too much. So, um, and then lastly, things like jewelry, and nails you can save money by getting jewelry from like primark um like i actually bought some earrings from primark and they were like two pound i didn't end up wearing them because i bought two pairs from compact but they were nice and if i was like unsure of what earring i wanted to wear i had them as a backup so there's always like cool stuff you can buy from primark your generic clothes stores all that kind of stuff and with nails you don't have to get acrylics um you could just get stick on nails me personally this year i'm going to have stick on nails because i absolutely hate acrylics and i had acrylics on for like four weeks um because my shows were like that far apart and it just drove me mad i'm so clumsy i just hurt myself with them so you could get stick ons or have no nails just have like natural Make sure your nails are all one length, which mine are not right now. They're the boy fingers. <laughs> um, and then makeup is one that you can save massively on. Um, so if you're good at makeup, you could do your own. Um, if you're horrendous at makeup, there's things that you can do. So YouTube have lots of tutorials. Um, I actually did a masterclass last week with Georgia Rose. She was doing a stage makeup one. And... We literally like followed her along on Zoom and did our own makeup and I wasn't actually that bad. I mean, could have been worse. I'm still not gonna do my own makeup because it's just an added stress on the day, but you could watch some tutorials, you could even book a one-to-one -one lesson and then learn how to do your own makeup so that come show day, you can save yourself 65 quid. And if you're doing like two, three shows, that's gonna save you a lot of money. So that's something to bear in mind. And then like with your hair, another thing you could do that yourself. Um, I did my own hair. I just got some, they were like clipping extensions from Lullabells, really cheap, like 20 quid. And it was just to make my hair thicker. They were pre-curled, so they were a bit wavy. Um, and then I just waved my own hair. So, and that's simple enough. If you're having your hair straight as well, even easier. But yeah, so that's another way you could save money. Um, and then things like backstage bits, like hair removal, obviously you don't have to get waxed, that'll send, like, save you some money, you could shave, what's that hair removal cream called? Neat? No, I don't know, you know, hair removal cream, so you could do that kind of thing. So, so that just about covers it all. Um, I use a competition budget planner, which I got off the Compact Resources section in their website i will link it in the description box below so you can get it if you're thinking about competing or you just want to kind of budget for it and total it i mean me personally i used it but it made me feel a bit sick when i realized how much i'm spending like, but it competing is an expensive thing and it is just one of those things especially being a girl because there's so many more things that you have to pay for than a boy does like hair like they just get a 15 quid haircut. We've got to spend 100 quid on getting our hair dyed. Annoying. But, um, yeah, competing is expensive. It's going to cost you probably, if you did one show, it's still, I'd say the cheapest you could probably get it is like 600, 700 pound all in. And I obviously haven't included like coach fees, food, gym membership, that kind of thing, supplements. Um, but they're just things that, are like a given like you should have a coach for your prep I hope you do anyway because trust me you don't want to do it without 
one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I wouldn't want to comment on how much coaches charge. Um, and obviously it depends how you spend your money on food, but everyone's different in that sense. But definitely like paying for things as you go um, here and there and then you haven't got to pay like a big whack of money in one go. That's the way to do it. Um, and then you can just save some money with these little tips that I've given you. But yeah, so I hope this video has been insightful um, and it's helped you kind of realise how much competing costs. Um, I hope some of the tips will help you if you are thinking of competing. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please like the video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.